And if I may ask if the Trinity is the cornerstone of Christianity, then why is it not mentioned in the Bible? Did Jesus teach the concept of the Trinity? Is Jesus lying and contradicting himself when he confirms God is one, saying, the Lord our God, the Lord is one? If the Trinity is so important and essential to Christianity, how come the church of the first three centuries was not even familiar with it, let alone believing or teaching this concept? When did the word Trinity enter the Christian world? Did Christianity borrow its creeds from Babylon? Why do the creeds of the consuls contradict each other? And why four Gospels instead of one? Where are the other Gospels formulated in the first three centuries? Is the Bible then the verbatim Word of God? Even if it was written by man, never seen or met Jesus, who left it paralyzed with tons of errors and contradictions. Coming up next, find out what happened in the first three centuries after Jesus departed this earth. Greetings, good evening everyone, and welcome back to Blogging Tawheed. Before we start, if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. I don't promise you roses, but what you will find is conversations, thoughts, and theology strange and different from your belief. You may disagree with the arguments I make or the questions I raise. Differences at the end of the day are bound to exist everywhere and anywhere. This is one of the stark realities of life, is that diversions of views does exist between people and this is a blessing we are different because we are blessed we are blessed because we are different having said that the core teaching of christianity is summarized as god is co-equal co-eternal one substance trinity and that jesus christ is god this doctrine is considered by many as the cornerstone of christianity and it is common among Christians that tend to think and believe that the Trinity is all over in the Bible. They insist in the belief of the Trinity of three co-equal, co-eternal persons in the one God is the absolute true faith. Many respected and well-known Bible scholars, however, don't think Jesus is God in a Trinitarian sense in the New Testament. Many distinguished scholars also maintain that the doctrine of the Trinity is not taught anywhere in the Bible. If you haven't seen my videos about the logical problems of the Trinity, make sure you watch them first. It should be somewhere, I believe, here. And I'll put the link in the comment section. Any human with a sound, sane mind who is looking for the truth will see that the Christian doctrine of the Trinity is a contradiction to what God the Almighty stated in the Old Testament. This kind of doctrine is never taught by Jesus or his disciples and thus contradicts everything Jesus taught. If Jesus really taught the doctrine of the Trinity, how come there is not one single verse, one single verse where he states God is, uh, is one but in three persons? God is one but in three persons. Something along the lines of Father is God, Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is also God. Anyone reading throughout the New Testament will see Jesus saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus is telling you people, God is one. Anyone who has a God is definitely not a God. Therefore, entertaining the idea Jesus taught the Trinity is A, historically false. B, Jesus would definitely be contradicting himself and the message he was sent to preach. And C, 
Christianity is derived from Judaism, and Judaism was strictly Unitarian, believing in one God. So where did Christianity go wrong? Because Jesus taught monotheism, not polytheism. Moreover, we have an overwhelming historical records that the church of the first three centuries did not worship God as co-equal, co-eternal, uh, consubstantial, one substance, three-in-one, mysterious Godhead. The early church worshipped one God and believed in a subordinate son. The concept of the Trinity was outlandish to the early church. This pagan doctrine originated with Babylon and was passed on to most of the world's religions. This polytheistic Trinitarianism, believing in more than one God, was intertwined with Greek religion and philosophy and slowly trickled and worked its way into Christian thoughts and creeds in the 320s after Christ. That's over three centuries after Jesus departed this earth. The idea of God the Son is Babylonian, paganism, and mythology that was grafted into Christianity. Worshipping God the Son is idolatry, and idolatry is biblically condemned. It breaks the first great commandment of God of not having any gods before Him. In Exodus uh, chapter 20, verse 3, three centuries after Christ, the emperor Constantine forced the minority opinion of the Trinity up in the Council of Nicaea. The Christian church went downward slide from there. In fact, some of the creeds in the councils actually contradict each other. And pay attention to this. This is very important. The Council of Nicaea in 325 said that Jesus Christ is God. The Council of Constantinople in 381 said that the Holy Spirit is God. Now, the Council of Euphysius in 431 said human beings are totally depraved. The Council, the fourth one, the Council of Chalcedon in 451 said that Jesus Christ is both man and God. And this is when they finally paganized and trinitanized Christianity. If you follow logic here, then first you have Jesus Christ as God, then you have man totally depraved, and then you have Jesus Christ as man and God. If Jesus Christ is both man and God, does this mean that God is also totally depraved? Well, maybe the doctrine of the co-equal, co-eternal, one substance, mysterious, three-in-one, triune Godhead is deprived of any historical foundation tying it into the Christianity of the first three centuries. However, the historical information actually ties the Trinity into various pagan origins, and this is a fact. Yet most Christian churches continue to teach and believe the doctrine that God is co-equal, co-eternal, one substance, mysterious three-in-one triune Godhead, and that Jesus Christ is God, and that the Trinity is the cornerstone of Christianity. The church of the first three centuries. Um, this is a book that was written by Alvin Lumsen in 1865. I will put the link in the comment section. He says, and I quote, the modern doctrine of the Trinity is not found in any document or relic belonging to the church of the first three centuries. So far as any remains or any record of them are preserved coming down from early times are as regards this doctrine an absolute blank. They testify so far as they testify at all to the supremacy of the Father, the only true God, and to the inferior and 
derived nature of the sun. There is nowhere among these remains a co-equal trinity, but no undivided and divided three co-equal infinite self-existent and eternal. This was a conception to which the age had not arrived. It was of later origin. End of quote. So during the first three centuries, Christians did not believe that Jesus Christ was co-equal and co-eternal with God or that he was God the Son. They believed that Jesus Christ was subordinate to God and that he had a beginning that he was born. Those though that believed otherwise were the exception. The doctrine of the Trinity is considered Christianity's worst self-inflected wound. And the Trinitarians who believe that the concept of the Triune God was such an established fact that it was not considered important enough to mention at the time of the New Testament was written should be challenged by this historical facts. It is a simple fact and undeniable historical fact that several major doctrines that now seem central to the Christian faith such as the doctrine of the Trinity and the Trinity of the nature of Christ were not present in a full and self-defined generally accepted form until the fourth and fifth centuries. So if they are essential today as all of the orthodox creeds and confessions assert it must be because they are true. If they are true then they must always have been true. They can't just have become true in the 4th and the 5th and the 6th century. You get my point? But if they are both true and essential creeds, how can it be that the early church took centuries to formulate them? We are reminded again and again in Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 and it states that God is not a man. God was not a bo born and God certainly did not die. But when people deviate from what the Bible teaches, you can come up with the bizarre complexities of Trinitarian religions uh, and mysteries that contradict logic, contradict common sense, and even contradicts God's word. So the word Trinity is not found in the Bible itself. It did not find a place formally in the theology of the church till the fourth century. It is not a biblical doctrine in the sense that any formation of it can be found in the Bible. The scripture also does not give us a formulated doctrine of the Trinity itself. And finally, by general consensus, scholars agree that there is no doctrine of the Trinity as such in either the Old Testament or the New Testament. The road which led from Jerusalem to Nicaea was scarcely a straight one. Fourth century Trinitarianism did not reflect accurately early Christian teaching regarding the nature of God. It was on the contrary, a deviation from the teaching. The Trinity is deviation from believing in one God. It is a deviation from what the early church taught and it is deviation from the scripture itself. The formulation one God in three person was not solidly established, certainly not fully assimilated into the Christian life and its profession of faith prior to the end of the fourth, uh, fourth century. So throughout the New and Old Testament, God is a single personal being. The idea that a trinity is to be found there or even anywhere shadowed forth is an assumption that has long held sway in theology but is utterly without foundation. Neither the word trinity nor the explicit 
doctrine as such appears anywhere in the New Testament, nor did Jesus and his followers intend to contradict the Shema in the Old Testament. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. The doctrine developed gradually over several centuries and through many controversies. By the end of the fourth century, actually, the doctrine of the Trinity took substantially the form it has maintained ever since. The Shema consists of three sections of uh, the scripture, Deuteronomy 6, 4 uh, and 9, Deuteronomy 11, 13 and 21, and Numbers 15, 37 and 41. It is called the Shema after the Hebrew word here, the first word in Deuteronomy 6.4. The Shema was to be recited twice daily, once up at rising and once when going to bed. So the Old Testament Jews would start and finish their day with here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. We as Muslims say this five times, five times a day. There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and Jesus is his messenger. La ilaha illallah and Isa Rasulullah. There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and Moses is his messenger. La ilaha illallah and Musa alayhi salam is Rasulullah. There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, and Ibrahim is his messenger. La ilaha illallah and Ibrahim, Rasulullah, all the way to Adam. Very simple, no complications. God is one, and all his prophets and messengers, including Jesus Christ, are part of his creations. The creations and the creator are not the same. The Creator always existed. The Creator does not have a beginning or an end. Unlike the creation, we all have a beginning and an end. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for good ending. Nas'alullah subhanahu wa ta'ala husn al khatima. Till next time, peace be with you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.